Hey, Husker Nation. Welcome to Memphis. I'm Jessica Cootie here with Kent Pavelka, the voice of Husker men's basketball here at the team hotel. Well, how does it feel to be here, be back, calling a game in the NCAA tournament? It feels kind of like uh, back in the day at a bowl game, you know, like for a national championship. I mean, I, you know, this is one NCAA game, but it feels like that to me. Maybe because, you know, we're waiting. Let's play, you know, let's get this done. I, I'm anxious to, to see if uh, if they can win this one and, and get the monkey off their back. But, yeah, it's been great. You know, you go back to the start of the season. They were picked to finish 12th. Uh, you were with this team the whole way. Can you just describe the journey from the start to the finish to, to where they are today? When I walked in and saw them for the first time when they were practicing to get ready to go to Spain, they popped at me. Those The new guys just popped. And I, I, I saw, I mean, and I said so. I think I tweeted it out at the time. I, I thought this team could, could be what it is today. Um, you know, the additions with the guys that were coming back, you could see the possibilities. And uh, I was right. I was right. You just coach Hoiberg and, and the job that he's done this year, but from when he was hired to where it is now, um, how special is it to see him get a team to, back to the NCAA tournament and to do this for this program? Well, I mean, it's like a, it's like a, a movie script, you know? It's like Hoosiers, but let's name it Huskers, right? I mean, this is just a, a great story with his grandfather, um, and I, I've never been more uh, enamored with, with a coach at Nebraska than I am with Fred. Um, it, I, 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 it's, I'm, I, can't, I can't explain how impressed I, I, I am by what's happened and how taken I am by what's happened. And, it's got to end up with a, a victory on Friday, and it just has to. You know, I know you said you they, the guys popped you on at practice the very first time you saw them, but I've been asking everybody this. I'd like to get your perspective, too. When did you think, okay, this team could maybe be pretty special, could maybe do something pretty special? Well, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. I thought, I thought from, from, the, from the very beginning, I thought this team has what it takes to be good enough to compete in the conference, and, and uh, you know, I didn't put a number of wins on it, but – I could just tell with Rink and, and Josiah and, uh, and uh, uh, all three guys that he added, who am I forgetting here, along with the guys coming back, that um, I thought they had all the pieces, you know, and, and they do. They've got eight guys that can that give you something unique, each one of them. It's like he's got a, in any given situation, he's got a tool and toolbox that will, will, will be appropriate. And, um, you know, that... The, the thing that has been impressive to me about this team is that uh, they bought in initially and realized that if they play like they're coached, that they, they are better individually and they're better as a team. And that's been fun to see from the inside. What about, too, just the unselfishness? And it's somebody different, it seems like, every night. It could be somebody else's night, but whoever's night it is, they try to find them and they try to get the, that guy the ball. Yeah, I think that ties into what I, I was just saying about uh, – you know, they, they realize that that's the formula and they're will, you know, they're willing to play that way. And then, you know, the other thing that people don't talk about is on the other end, on the defensive end. I mean, they're pretty good. They're pretty special. Uh, and you put that together and you play hard like they do and you win 23 games. You know, it's it's um, special to be here for any team, but. For this team in particular, they got a chance to do something that's never been done and, and make some history here. What makes you believe that this is the group that can do it? Well, I'm hoping this is the group that can do it. You know, I, I think you're going to play a team that is just every bit as good as the, the best teams you've played in the conference. So, you know, you're going to have to play your best to, to get it done. Uh, I, I'm thinking more about what it will mean if they do get it done. And for me, uh, with thinking back to – all the years invested. I think back to some of the players from years and years and decades ago, and and the coaches uh, just posted, just tweeted something on behalf of, of Coach Knee. You know, I mean, it, this is important to him. And if they can win this Friday and get the monkey off their back, as far as this never having won a NCAA tournament game, yes, we know. Well, they can never say never again. And this will be a victory for all those guys. They will feel that it's a victory for them. So it's 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 important beyond it, it that it is way more important than it is for just the team itself this year.
All right, you, um, your charts or something, they're, they're artwork. You've, you've completed them. You're, well, you'll, I guess, keep tweaking them leading up to, to tip off. But as you dive into this Texas A&M team, what jumps out to you? What is something to be watching for for, for listeners that are watching this? Just got to keep them to one shot. I mean, they, you know, they lead the country in, in offensive rebounding. Um, and that's going to be – it's like playing Rutgers on steroids, and a little combination between Illinois and Rutgers. Um, if you can, if you can limit them to, to one shot on most possessions, and then their little guard doesn't go off, I, I think that's a win. Okay, tell us about the process of putting those charts together. Not much to it. I, I, you know, it's a blank canvas the day after the last game, and I just start in, and we're going to tweet something to sh- show that from from that point to when we start the game. I think fans might be interested. What all do you put on there? What how, what helps you tell the story when they're listening into these games? Well, the first thing I do is it, it and I did this for football too. It's it's a it's a call. I call it a spotting board. Um, it just gets me. I put the names and the numbers and their you know their heights and their weight and what grade they're in, what the hometown is, and their shooting percentages and little little tidbits of information and. It does two things for me during a broadcast. If I, you know, look up and momentarily go blank and as to who it is, I can see who it is and get that down. But it's just the process of writing all those details down. A lot of times, I don't even need to look at it. I already know it because it's kind of just prep. You know, it's just, it's just. You understand. Oh, yeah. You've done it. Oh, just what's been your perspective of the way that Husker Nation has fallen in love with this team and this program this season? Well, it, again, it reminds me of uh, the, you know, the 90s, the, the, the best football teams that ever were at Nebraska. It's that kind of um, collective buy-in. And, I mean, I guess the feel at PBA this year, at the best times this past year, in terms of energy and, and collective enthusiasm by the fans reminded me of the best days at Memorial Stadium. So it's just, uh, it, I don't know, maybe I'm – overplaying it but that's how it feels to me how much fun have you had this season calling these games the best (laughs) the best ever Uh, I just have enjoyed it so much Um, and I I, it gets old but I, I compare it to the in terms of enjoying it because it's been successful again it goes back to it goes back to those good days in football but maybe it's just a product of of my experience and where I'm at in life. Uh, I, I just think I'm in a place where I can enjoy it. You know, it's just, it's just been marvelous. You've done a great job. This group's pretty fun though, right? Uh, even off the court, they're pretty, pretty great guys. Pretty fun to get to know. Yeah, they are. You know, uh, I found, now you tell me if your experience is different. I, I have found that college athletes are a little bit standoffish, you know, they're in, kind of into themselves. And the thing that has been most enjoyable to me is when they come back, years later because they I mean for them 10 years later these memories are more more important than they are at the, at the at a given moment you know these guys will come back five years from now and they'll they'll appreciate it more than they do today all right so if the Huskers get a win then what happens with the charts because it's been a week-long process for this one it's a quick turnaround well the one that after the win on Friday after I decide what to put down on it that will go. That will be auctioned off, and that will be for the Kent Pavelka Retirement Fund. <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see where the money is, right? <laughs> well, it's history, right? So it's yeah. a, it's a piece of history. All right. So 5:50 tip. You guys will be on the air coming up 4:50, right? Um, Friday, leading up to to the tipping this thing off in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, we're going on at five, so it'll be a short pregame show, and I can't wait. Cannot wait. Can't wait either. All right, for Kent Pavelka, I'm Jessica Cootie with the Huskers Radio Network.